This is Karen with NewClevelandRadio.net, and it's time for Heart Mojo with Melinda Smith. And Melinda, you have a return visitor today. I do. Gloria Treaster's back. We were so intrigued with all of the things that she told us about with her book, Wellness 101, that we're going to hopefully maybe make this a regular project where we can get health information out to our listeners. So... Welcome back, Gloria. Thank you. Thank you. Happy to be here. Thanks. So we're going to discuss embracing your unique biochemistry, the key to personalized health and longevity. So mm -hmm. explain to me what, how you find that unique biochemistry, because you, most people I think would assume a doctor should know that, a regular doctor, they take all this information, they do blood work, all of that. Why don't they have my unique biochemistry? Yeah, it's interesting. Um, most of the markers that we get when we go to the doctor on a regular basis don't really give us that much information. And a lot of times what you're getting can be enough. But for some people, they walk around not feeling well or having undiagnosed problems, being told it's in your head or I can't find anything wrong with you. And so people leave thinking there's something wrong with them, like they made it up or they don't get it, but they know there's something wrong. Mm -hmm. And so there's so many lab tests that are out there today, especially, and they're coming out with new ones all the time that can really give you a deeper dive into what's going on in your unique biochemistry. And what's so interesting and what people don't realize is we're all biochemically unique. There isn't anybody else on the planet that's exactly like you are even if you have an identical twin because of environmental factors which i think we touched on last time it's yeah. there's a name for it now called epigenetics but that means above genetics so you have your genetic makeup of which 80 percent of it is modifiable through lifestyle so mm -hmm. the argument that i'm going to get diabetes because it runs in my family is true to a certain extent, but for many people, they have the ability through their diet and their exercise and their exposure to toxins and things like that to actually control whether or not that gene gets expressed. And that's what they refer to it as in functional medicine. So you may have the gene, but just because you have the gene doesn't mean that it's going to fully blossom into that health condition and, and you, you have the control of that that's what i was going to just say you got to have some control it's coincidentally i got a phone call from a longtime friend this afternoon when i was dr out driving and she said oh my gosh i have to go on cholesterol medication my on a stat my my um cholesterol is 230 something i'm like wow 230 i can't even imagine she goes well, I, well, my family has cholesterol issues, so I have cholesterol issues, and I'm listening to her, and I know what this person eats. Mm -hmm. So it isn't just about the gene. It's about what she's eating in addition to that she has in control. She should have control over, right? Right, and total cholesterol, really, I mean, what you want to be looking at is the ratio between your HDL and your LDL. Right. And by the way, I am genetically predisposed to having high LDL, the lousy, the bad cholesterol, mm -hmm. but I have enough of the good cholesterol because I eat well and I exercise mm -hmm. that it balances it out. So you're always also looking at the ratio. And, and there's so many other things that you can do about yourself. Some people may have food sensitivities and they don't even know it. And that's what's causing things like headaches or fatigue or stomach aches and or skin breakouts. Um, mm -hmm. uh, there's all kinds of things that manifest from having a food sensitivity. And unless your doctor checks for that, I mean, when's the last time you had a doctor say, let's check your food sensitivities? They just don't do it. And, and it's not that they're bad people. That's just not part of the conventional allopathic way of treating people. But someone who knows that you get headaches or you get you know, stomach aches, they can tell if 
you could tell without getting a test. Let's just mm -hmm. say that because some people can't afford the testing. So let's be mindful of what people can and cannot afford because these tests do cost out of pocket money. So you can always assume that something's bothering you from a perspective of a food allergy or sensitivity and just stop eating it for you need three full weeks to be off of it. But well, you, they can keep a food diary. They can keep a food diary. It's a great idea. And just note, notate down, you know, I ate this and then two hours later I had a headache. You can start looking for um, different kinds of, um, what's what am I looking for? You know, it, patterns that occur after you're eating certain things. And that's just one example. You know, in my weekly article that I, I write and I post on LinkedIn, I was talking about um, the MTHFR gene. Have you heard of that one? Mm -hmm. I actually have that genetic defect. 40% of the people in the, in the world have this MTHFR gene and they affectionately call it the mother effort gene because it's just... <laughs> But um, if you have the mother effort gene, which I do, um, it keeps it's a, it it keeps your body from being able to break down folate, and since so many of us have it, that's why um, when women are pregnant, they have them take folate because or folic acid, because most people have this problem. What can happen if you have that? And this is a problem that I was able to identify. And because I was able to identify that as being part of my unique biochemistry, I know that I'm predisposed to having inflammation in the body. It means that it can cause homocysteine levels to rise. That's another marker that your doctor will never check is homocysteine and C-reactive protein, which are two really important markers that tell For you inflammation. inflammation. Yeah. And inflammation is the root cause of almost all disease. So I know that I'm predisposed to inflammation. So I make sure I take high levels of curcumin. So question, mm -hmm. if you know that certain things cause inflammation and you're not gonna take them out of your diet for whatever reason, are you saying you should be taking the supplement that would help? It could, yeah. I mean, there's, um, and I think I showed this, this is, um, let me see if I can find this page in my book. Here we go. Um, there's a, a page that shows you, it might be backwards and I apologize. That's it. Fine. it is the way I'm looking at it, but there's a list of foods to eat that cause inflammation and foods mm -hmm. that are anti-inflammatory. So if you're, if you're going to do it with diet, you can, if you're just not going to do it with diet, then you want to do something that's going to be anti-inflammatory, like taking curcumin, for instance, or mm -hmm. fish oils or resveratrol, or some of these really good anti-aging, anti-inflammatory type supplements. It's funny because I've mentioned on this podcast before, my son has had a lot of health issues and my youngest son, and we talked about it a little bit last time. So I did, because the doctors couldn't find out what was wrong with him at the time, I took out all the high allergy foods for about two months. And because I didn't want him to do it alone, I did it with him. And what I found is, as I gradually added certain things back in, it lent joint pain and upset stomachs and things like that. Now, I have to admit, I still eat those things today. But when I first went back on them, they made me sick. Mm -hmm. My favorite ice cream made me sick. I'm like, oh, my God, I can't live the rest of my life and not have my ice cream. Yeah. Because it means that much to me. So I'm sure maybe some of the inflammation I experienced had to do with that. But gluten was a big one. Gluten, dairy is huge too. And mm -hmm. well, that's what it was, dairy. gluten and dairy. <laughs> gluten and dairy that, you know, if you get rid of those, everybody's going to be a lot healthier. You'll feel a lot yeah. better. Mm -hmm. I just can't do it all the time. It's the problem good. was it took a little bit of getting back used to. Once I got it back in my system, I didn't get immediately sick, but obviously it's probably causing issues anyway, it's just right. not as overt. Right. And it does. And there's so many other tests that you can do with to find out about your unique biochemistry. Um, there was a lab in Houston, Texas called SpectraCell, and they do um, 
they can test your nutrient content at a cellular level, which is really cool. And they're not just looking at what you eat yesterday, what you ate yesterday, what's in your blood. They do it in your white blood cells. And so it's like a six month look back at wow. all of the nutrients. And once you can identify nutrient deficiencies, you can be very specific and very targeted in what you're taking and what you're eating. It's really cool. And there's so many different reasons why you might have a nutrient deficiency. You know, it could be genetic, it could be a drug you're taking, it could be something else. And so it could be your age. As we get older, we don't absorb things as well. And mm -hmm. so being able to identify that is really cool. I think they're still around. I would have to check for our listeners, but um, that's a lab that really tests cool things. And then, you know, you can test, there's so many biomarkers out there now. So if you have somebody that really knows how to guide you, you would know what to test based mm -hmm. on what you're experiencing. And some of these tests almost, not that they're dangerous to hurt you, but if you don't have the right person who's going to read them and take them seriously, mm -hmm. you know, then you're you're spending money, you're doing things that that aren't going to help you. And I think it's important for listeners to understand there are these opportunities out there, but work with the people who know, you know, how to work with them. And I'll give you an example. My husband's my husband was he's diabetic. He takes his blood every morning. He pricks his finger. And he started having shakes in the middle of the day. Doctor said, oh, you're becoming hypoglycemic during the day, you know, have a candy bar, have whatever. Well, he works in IT. He never at his own desk. He, he doesn't have anything that he can take and eat. So then they gave him this little thing that he puts on his arm and he can test his blood. Mm -hmm. It's always 50 points difference than if he were to prick his finger. So it's driving him crazy. But he he went and met with his doctor and his doctor said, the prick in your finger is going to be more accurate. The thing on your arm is to guide you. So if you are feeling shaky, then you know you've got to do something. And he said, why didn't you tell me this beginning? <laughs> For a week, he thought he was going crazy. You know, oh my God, it says it's, you know, 250, but yeah, I just pricked my finger and it said I was 121, you know, which is the right one. So it's important that you're working with the right people to get the real help that you need. Right. And how hard is that these days? All the good doctors are leaving. Um, mm -hmm. and you got to find another one. And then the other good ones you hear about aren't taking new patients. And Honestly, it's it's hard. So I have um, two doctors. I have a functional medicine doctor and I have a primary care. I don't really listen to the primary care doctor very often, but I, she's there to like order my lab tests when I need them and, you know, bone density and things like that. But when it really comes down to my health, I, I go to my functional medicine doctor. So how does someone go about, as Karen pointed out, to make sure that they really are doing what they do, that they know their stuff, that they're good. Because there are a lot of people who claim a lot of different things and that doesn't mean that it's gonna help you. They're just taking your money. I know. Um, if you go onto the Institute for Functional Medicine's website, they'll have doctors there who are trained. Most any doctor in my opinion, or at least the ones I have met that go into that field are super caring people. They really want to help get to the root cause of your problems. And they did the IFM training because of that. Um, they didn't like the regular system. You know, the doctors that are practicing at the big hospital systems, they're being watched. And they'll be the first right. ones to tell you that. They only have X number of minutes for you. They can't go over. They can't listen to your story. They don't have time. So you either have to be your own medical advocate and take what they say with a grain of salt and then mm -hmm. find somebody who will treat you. And there's a lot of doctors now online offering lab testing, offering mm -hmm. 
mm-hmm. solutions for different health problems. So you might want to try those and then kind of see what their reviews look like. I know Dr. Um, Tammy Gutierrez and I, she's a functional medicine doctor and she's my colleague. We have a website called getwellwithus.net, not .com, but .net. And we offer a lot of training um, in fact, we just did a cardiovascular metabolic. So, you know, your your uh, thyroid, your mm-hmm. your um, uh, you know energy levels, all of that. We did a workshop, a two day workshop, one hour each day. The first day we worked with people on their lifestyle and their symptoms, and the second day they actually brought. We told them what lab tests to bring with them, and mm-hmm. we went over their lab tests with them. There was a small group of 10 people. We don't like to work with a lot of people because we like to give individual treatment, but people were able to connect the dots between their lifestyle and then their symptoms and then their markers. And we were able to explain to them what they meant. Because I know last time when we talked about biomarkers, we talked about, well, what what range is normal? You know, if you're out of range, are you out of range in a way that you really want to be out of range, because I would like to be out of range for somebody my age and be in the range of somebody 35 years old. I don't want to be in range for a 72, almost 73 year old. That would really suck. So, um, you know, not what I really want to do. And, you know, these are things that we can, I always like to say, control the controllable. You can control these things. Certain things you can't. In your newsletter, you talked about health span versus lifespan. Mm -hmm. You want to expand on that a little bit? Yeah. I mean, we're living longer, although lately the numbers are going backwards now in the United States. People are not living longer. But let's say you live until you're 85, 90, 95, 100. I mean, how do you want to spend those extra years? Do you want to be able to get on the floor and play with your grandkids? Do you want to travel the world or do you want to be confined at home or in a nursing home? So I don't like to call it a lifespan or longevity anymore. You call it your health span. How long do you plan to be healthy? How long do you want to be healthy? For me, I'd like to be healthy until I drop someday and that happens to everybody, but I'd like that to be later in life and I don't want to suffer. So you know, we need to set the stage for that to happen over the course of a lifetime. And it's never too late to start. And that was going to be my question. Today, it's not, it's never too late to start. Exercise can benefit you at any age. Changing up your diet can benefit you at any age. Taking better care of your skin, no matter what it is that you're doing. You know that better than anybody, Melinda, right? Yep. <laughs> I used to work in skincare room. for those of you who I don't know that I worked with medical skincare and one of the reasons I enjoyed it so much is you brought it up about your skin reacting to things you know they people would come in not only with wrinkles and sun damage and it wasn't just about beauty though a lot of it was but serious problems acne problems things like that and it was my job to figure out what was the base that was causing it and I love doing it, but I knew that it was either something they were eating, something that, you know, could be laundry detergent. It could be anything that caused that skin to get acne. So, sure. you know, it's if you could get, if you had a doctor that listened to all the information like I used to do for them, you should be able to turn back the clock a little. A little bit. Yeah. And, you know, look, even if you're starting where you're at, you don't want it to get worse. And a lot of people have eczema. They have all kinds of skin issues. You know, diet impacts that greatly. And if you aren't going to eat more omega-3s, then take a supplement. I mean, but that helps with things like eczema. So a lot of things I have um, on my full script website, which is where all the supplements and the skincare products are. Mm -hmm. I have um, what are called plans where people can go and look, like if you have a certain type of problem, go and look at the different kinds of supplements that might help you and read the descriptions. I'm not Mm -hmm. trying to sell you everything, but go in there and kind of pick and choose like, oh, that sounds like something that might help me. Um, But with the skincare, definitely, if you're not taking fish oils, that's a problem. And that's good for your heart. It's good for your brain, but it's also really good for your skin. 
You yeah. want quality yeah. fish oils that are sourced well too, because um, the problem you have with fish oils that aren't is that there's a lot of mercury in fish these days. Toxins and in you that, don't yeah. want to, you don't want to, you know, take toxic fish oils and then find out that you did har more harm to yourself than good. So they have to be sourced well. You need a good supplier. Nordic Naturals you can get anywhere, and they're a pretty good brand. Mm -hmm. I like the last brand. time you talked about K12 and. I did some reading up on it. I mm -hmm. asked you some questions um, and I called my doctor and he goes, why didn't I think of that? Because I have like an oral lichen planus, which we have not been able to get rid of. However, since taking the K-12, K2. I'm not flaring up. Yeah, it's K2. K2. Sorry, K2. yeah, K2. I am not flaring up. That's amazing. Huge difference. You know, and this is what, two, three weeks. But I I had to call him to tell him what, how I was doing. And he said, I should have known to tell you to add that. So okay. I said, well, just remember it in the future. That's really nice that, that a doctor actually admitted that. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah, it's really important. And and another thing that affects our biochemical individuality is your exposure to toxic chemicals. And that's mm -hmm. something that we definitely have control over to an extent. We can control the chemicals we're using in our home to clean. We can control what we're putting on our skin that might have toxic chemicals in them, what we're putting in our body and, and what's around us. Um, I know in my house, when we had to get new carpet, I got wool. If you have natural fibers, it's better than having synthetics. Mm -hmm. Not everybody can change the carpet in your home, but if you're considering doing that, consider doing something that might be less toxic because off-gassing occurs and, you know, using non-toxic yep. paints and things like that. And that definitely um, affects your ability to age well. It's like dry cleaning. People don't think about that. Yeah. Dry cleaning puts a ton of chemicals out there. Yeah, and you right can on your body toxic um, dry cleaners, but I wash almost everything and hang it up to dry. And we use non-toxic laundry detergent. Yeah, I mean, even the stuff that says dry cleaning, it's too expensive. <laughs> it drives me nuts. You so, know, go ahead. Go no, no, go ahead. And then I, I'll... Oh, I, I was going to talk about um, energy. Is that what you were thinking? No, but that's okay. We'll go there. I won't forget. Yeah. So, you know, as we age, we have to also be mindful about our mitochondria. And so those are the little powerhouses in ourselves that create energy. And so many of my friends, and even I was like that last week where you just feel like, oh my God, I don't have any energy. What's going on here? And so um, we want to make sure that we're also doing the right thing for our mitochondria. So that's also exercise. I know how boring that is, but it, you know, people don't want to hear about diet and exercise, you know, but it's unfortunately one of the main ways that we can stay well. And then um, eating foods that are rich in antioxidants, making sure you're eating a rainbow every day, mm -hmm. a rainbow of colors, all different colors, and then also some supplements. And I think last time we talked a little bit about CoQ10. We did. Um, and then NAD, which is another supplement that helps with mitochondrial um, and it helps with repair and function and when you're sleeping and I'm sorry you didn't get sleep last night Melinda but I, <laughs> you know, I don't know why but it happens right it, it happens to everybody it, if it happens too often then you might want to look into why that happens but everybody has a bad night now and then but at night, that's when your body repairs itself. So mm -hmm. it needs that deep, deep sleep. And then also um, stress management. We all want to really do a better job of addressing stress. We all have stress, but the way we react to it is very much in our control. I was listening. This is the question was going to be, how do you get healthy markers? And you've kind of already started going into that. Um, uh, I see, I lost my own train of thought when I was talking to you. It'll come back. <laughs> go ahead and go back into the healthy markers and it'll pop back in my head. Yeah. And so I think um, some of the big things that people are going to want to be mindful of is if you aren't exercising now, let's get you on a routine. It do, You don't have to start out by carving out an hour of a, of a day to do it. Little exercise snacks. Little bites. And minute snacks, little bites. 
um, add up. They count, don't think they don't. So when your coffee's brewing in the morning, go do some push-ups against the wall or do some squats um, or do some kicks, you know, back kicks again, you know, hold on to the counter and kick back so you're working your butt. And, you know, if you can go out for a walk or if you're on the telephone, walk around your house in circles. Whatever you're doing, try to turn it into an activity. I think if all of our listeners this month amped up what they're doing exercise wise, they'd see a difference right away. And um, like I said, little things add up, get yourself a pair of hand weights. Maybe when you're watching television, do some, you know, arm lifts, Girl. overhead mm -hmm. things, some of this, you know, if you can see me. Get your triceps. I mean, how many of us girls hate this? The wave. Um, and the wave and this wave too. Wave. <laughs> yeah. I mean, how many of us girls, I, I don't have it real bad, but even when I have a little bit, I'm like, Oh God, I don't want that. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. you know, you can get yourself some hand weights. If you can't get yourself a piece of TheraBand and just, mm -hmm. use that. <clears throat> and if you go, if you get a piece of TheraBand, it'll cost you maybe five bucks maybe 10 at the most, if you're not sure where to get it, if there's a physical therapy clinic near your house. Believe it or not, Five Below has it sometimes. You can go to Five Below and pick up some weights, light weights and bands. It would be great. And those bands work fabulously. And um, TheraBand is a brand name. Mm -hmm. And they're like the industry standard for like physical therapy clinics. You know, I owned a physical right. therapy company for 17 years. So um I've been in physical therapy for 23 years of my career. Those bands, you can do so much with them. And if you go online, TheraBand Academy, I think has a whole list with pictures of exercises you can do for different body parts. You can turn that whole thing into a gym. You don't need to go to the gym. You don't need to spend an hour. You can find the time. If you don't find the time, you're just making excuses. You need to find the time. Um, it's an act of self-love. You've got to love yourself enough to carve out a few minutes here and there to do this for yourself. And the payoff is great. I mean, the energy you get and the way you look and the way you feel, it pays off in the end. It's also a stress releaser, which stress was what I was going to talk yep. about. So I told you to come back to me. Um, <laughs> Sometimes you got to wonder when your brain at this age, people are like, hmm, what's going on that I can't remember everything. Right. Um, so with stress, I was listening to something online the other day, how it actually changes you genetically mm -hmm. and that you can pass that on because you've made changes. If stress can do that to your body, that's amazing. Yeah. So Not only does it pass on through you to your children, um, because you can get it from, actually, you can get it from your grandparents because mm -hmm. um, your grandmother's eggs are what made your mother. Right. You know? And so um, it passes on through generations. I was at a conference and Deepak Chopra was a speaker there. And he was talking about um, some studies that they did with uh, children of Holocaust survivors, of which I am one, which explains why I'm so messed up but um <laughs> he was talking about how they did a study and they discovered that yes in fact trauma does pass on through the genes and so you might be genetically predisposed for stress which means you're just going to have to work a little harder to mm -hmm. kind of get rid of the stress and to learn how to cope with it and deal with it um and maybe do some stress reducing activities of which exercise is one of them yeah I, well, and you I know, heard... the interesting part is, is that we are not being told what stress is. Mm -hmm. And so we have that opportunity today to find ways of reducing it. I took a, um, a course, it was a six week course in a group, and it was about building your brain and building your brain to stop reacting in ways that was hurting you. And one of the things that they had us do was when you feel that stress coming on, rub your temples, rub your fingers together, 
move that thought away. And I will tell you, for the first couple of weeks of that training, I just thought it was hogwash. But I've been doing it. And I had a very stressful event happen yesterday. And without even thinking about it, I was rubbing my temples. And I finally looked at my husband. And I said, yeah, I think I'm going to go ride the bike now. And he just looked at me because I was red in the face. I was so upset. But without even thinking about it, this calmed me down, rode the bike, felt a hundred times better. Right. Sometimes you just have to compartmentalize it and just say, you know what, it is what it is. I'm going to deal with it. But right now I'm just going to take care of myself. And I'm finding what I've been doing is making sure I take a deeper breath, you know, belly breath type thing, mm -hmm. where you can feel your whole lung expand versus because breathing shallow, especially if you're upset and under stress. And I do find that makes a difference. Most people, <clears throat> excuse me, don't know how to breathe, which is really kind of funny since we do it all day long. Um, what you just said is so true, Melinda. People are shallow breathers for the most part. And unless you're really thinking about it and putting air down into your diaphragm, it's so interesting. I remember when my older daughter, Liz, was an ice skater and she started coughing all the time when she was skating. And I took her to the pediatrician and he said she has exer exercise induced asthma. And he gave us a prescription for an inhaler, which was a steroid. And I threw it away. I said, I'm not making you dependent on a steroid. Mm -hmm. I don't want her to be afraid to get on the ice if she forgot her inhaler at home. Right. And so instead, I found a physical therapist who taught breathing and I had her come to the house and I had her sit down with my daughter who taught her how to breathe. She would say, she put her hand on like Lizzie's side and say, breathe here, breathe here, now breathe here. And taught her because what she was doing was when she was scared to do something on the ice, like jump, she was holding her breath and that mm -hmm. was causing her to cough. So um, breathing is super important and you can really alleviate a lot of problems by learning how to breathe properly, like stress, but also like asthma, mm -hmm. which is crazy, right? And a lot of asthma or people that get diagnosed with asthma really have environmental allergies. Mm -hmm. They don't need a drug. They need to get rid of whatever is in the environment near sure. them that's they causing have, them to do that. Steroids are terrible. They're yeah. just terrible for you. And being a cancer survivor, I had a lot of steroids. So they put the stuff in you so you don't die right. when you're going through that process. So anything that anybody can do to stay off of that is what they need to do. They do. And it's just a matter of, of really sitting down and thinking about what you're doing. I could have easily filled that prescription. And to this day, my daughter might still think she's got exercise induced asthma and think that she needs an inhaler when really she just needed to get over her fear. And part of that was learning how to breathe. We just need to be a little bit more curious a little bit more inquisitive. If someone gives you a prescription before you fill it, go look it up on the internet and see what it is and see what the um, side effects of it are. And I think we spoke about this earlier, but this is something that we talked about today too, is nutrient deficiencies. Sometimes those prescription drugs cause those and that's what's causing the side effects. So see if it depletes certain nutrients from your body. And if it does, like statin drugs deplete CoQ10, and just take some CoQ10 if you have to be on that drug. Right. But chances are you might not need it, depending on what you decide. And it is a decision. It is a choice what you decide to do with your own health. I just want people to feel empowered to be the CEO of their own health and well-being. And part of that takes a little bit of work, but not enough that it isn't worth it. It's totally worth it. Absolutely. So, so if we go back to our original title, Embracing Your Unique Biochemistry, mm -hmm. can you kind of give us a list of what someone should do so that they know how to look for their unique biochemistry? Yeah, definitely. If you, if you want to find it out in your well, um, there are tests that you can do. Um, and I'd be happy to 
kind of put that out there. I have a chapter in my book. If anybody in our listener um, audience, listening audience would like to see what the, all the lab tests are, I can send you that chapter. I'd be happy to do that. Just reach out to me at Gloria at wellnessevolution.com. Mm-hmm. And it's evolution, not revolution. Sometimes people make that mistake, but it's wellnessevolution.com. I'll send you the whole chapter. I have a list of all the lab tests. And, and what it does is it gives you some insight into what could be going on for you and what test you might be looking for. Then if you're a good super sleuth, which you got to be, then you can call the lab company and find out what doctors in your area offer that test. That might be a good way to find the doctor that you want. Then of course, do your research, read reviews, see what, you know, in the internet today, we have so much access. So that's one thing, find out what your biochemistry looks like. Um, And then obviously the lifestyle things are pretty much across the board, but then again, they're slightly different for different people. You know, some people are meant to be vegan. Some people are meant to be meat eaters. Figure out what your body is trying to tell you. Be a good listener. If you're eating something and you don't feel right, or one of the, one day, I know when I was pregnant with my second daughter, all I wanted were the sloppiest hamburgers I could get my hands on. So, um, you know, you want meat, you know, your body's saying, oh my God, I need a hamburger. Go get one. Maybe it's trying to tell you something, even if you think, oh my God, I should be a vegan or I should be a vegetarian. It's not for everybody. I totally agree with you on that because when I was pregnant, I ate only what I tasted for. I didn't get sick. I didn't have morning sickness or any of those things. Likewise with the chemotherapy. I always advise people, they're like, oh, I'm going to get sick. I'm going to throw up. I never threw up. Of course, I'm not a person that throws up easily, but I do believe I listened to my body. And if my body said, you're having roast chicken and mashed potatoes and carrots, that's what I had. (laughs) And, but I didn't get sick. So I think that's a big piece of this. Most people just go, okay, I'm supposed to get sick. So I'm going to get sick. And they're not listening to what their body's telling them to do. Besides the fact that I would tell my body that the chemotherapy were little soldiers coming in to kill off the cancer you know I tried to visualize that that's so cool. that I had a healthier view if you can call it that mm-hmm. for going through that process but I totally think people need to listen their body is smart and their body will tell them what works for them a hundred percent yeah you just need to listen there's no doubt about that and you know trying to figure out then what you're going to eat I would say if you're not feeling well, um, think about what toxic chemicals you're exposing yourself to. Get rid of those and maybe find someone who can guide you through a detox. Sometimes you can just do, there's so many kits out there. Um, I know Metagenics makes one that's really good. And there's a powdered drink that you drink and there's a diet that you follow. Mm -hmm. So it tells you exactly what to eat every day and that'll help help um, your body take those toxins out. Um, Your body even creates toxins. It's not even just environmental, you know, as your cells die, if you don't get Mm -hmm. them out, they can build up and gum up the work. So you really want to do stuff to take it all out. I use a, um, actually take a detox supplement every night. I don't know. I take it before I go to sleep. I I understand that that's when your body does a lot of cleaning up and repairing and stuff. So there's one that I like that I take before I go to bed. And um, it's funny because in the morning when you do take it, because I don't remember all the time, you can smell it coming out in your urine. It, it's so, funny. It smells different in the morning. You can tell, boy, it's taken some stuff out of there. You know, like last week I was eating a lot of sugar. We had a wedding, we had parties, we had cake and um Honestly, I needed to detox from the sugar. Sugar is so bad. It's so, it is so addictive. It's so crazy. And even if you're more addictive than cocaine, it more addictive than a hundred percent or heroin. It's terrible. I bought a birthday cake and half of it was left and I couldn't stop eating it. It's, it's unbelievable. 
So yeah, we're all susceptible. No one's perfect, but just, you know, if you do it, just remember that you got to deal with it later. So I want to touch on this real quick and that's water. Yeah. Water is a tough one because everyone's, you got to drink water. You got to drink water and you do, your body's like 70% water. And so that's huge. You do need to do that. But now most of our water comes in plastic bottles. Mm -hmm. So what's your thoughts on water and what's the best water for someone to drink? Yeah, I use a Brita. I really wish that we had a purification system in our house. I keep looking into it and not doing it. I think that's a good idea for a number of reasons. I mean, even taking a shower in regular water, I mean, it it gets in your skin, it gets into your system. So I do use a Brita um, and I have a hard time drinking water, just plain water. So what I do is I'll put something in my water. Like um, there's a, a beverage, like a pop kind of a beverage that's called Zevia. Mm -hmm. And it's sweetened with stevia, which is not so bad for you. And I'll just put like a splash of that in my water just to give it some taste. I'm drinking that right now. I have a little bit of black cherry in here and some cola, you know, maybe an inch of pop and the rest of it's water. And it helps me get it down. Um, water in and of itself is so important for everything. It's important for detox. It's important for your skin. We talked about that. Um, you got to drink a lot of water. It's hard well, for a lot of people. I, I have a hard time getting it down myself. It's not only drinking it, but my concern now is the microplastics yes. that are in the water. We can't yeah. get rid of it. Even water that we get out of the tap, right? It's not taking that out. So any suggestions? I mean, I know a few people get their water in glass bottles, big glass bottles. That's not practical, I think, for most people. Right. That's hard. And then are you getting rid of the plastic? I mean, that's oh, yeah. in and that's in everything. Yeah. yeah. That's why I think we need to detox and we do need to cut down on the plastics in our life. It's really bad. I had 25 people here for brunch last week and I have the same plates. I bought um, melamine plates, 50 of them when I had a party for my mother five years ago. I have not used a paper plate or any disposable plates since then. We have all cloth napkins. We have all, you know, I bought like inexpensive silverware so I wouldn't have to buy plastic. I think we all need to be super mindful of that for the next generation. Mm -hmm. um, when we have block parties on our street, I run them and I won't let anybody bring paper napkins, paper towels. I bring my plates. I bring my napkins. They're like, hey, you know, that's a lot for you to wash. And I'm like, I have a dishwasher. I mean, I'm not going down to the river to wash my dishes. <laughs> we we don't have that problem here. So why can't we all just do that and get rid of some of that? Because that plastic situation is just messing it up for the next generation. And it's just not fair. I think it's also adding the toxins in the body. And they're really hard to get rid of. Once they're in the body, they're very hard to get rid of. They, you they probably are. can't. Really? Well, they build up. I think that's why a lot of people um, are suffering today with all kinds of problems. I mean, look at the mental illness. Mm -hmm. And um, that's a huge problem. And a lot of that has to do with the toxic chemicals and the uh, crap that we're eating, the processed foods that we're eating. You know, if you could do one thing this month to improve your health, stop eating processed foods. Um, they're horrible for you. I mean, go and get some real food. Um, if you can get organic, get organic, uh, processed foods have all that crap in it. And, you know, the plastics just compound the problem. It's like putting plastic on top of it in a microwave. Yeah. Oh yeah. I won't use a microwave. <laughs> yeah. Well, I do I know, know but I don't use it. Yeah. yeah. I use it every now and then, but very, very rarely. Like I know a few people like that. They don't I mean, I can't say use it a ton, but I do use it and I've been using it. At least it's not as bad. I remember my grandmother's, one of the first microwaves, felt like you were being radiated as you stood right in front of it. <laughs> and it was always hot, like the outside was hot. So you know yeah. it wasn't containing. Yeah. Right, right. Um, we did, when I was in my holistic training, I might've shared this before. I'm sorry if I'm being redundant, but um, we did a study with two plants and one plant was being watered. There were identical plants. One plant was watered with regular water. 
and one plant was watered with water that had been microwaved. I mean, it cooled down, but it was microwaved. Mm -hmm. It changes the molecular structure of whatever you're putting in there. And the plant that was being watered with the microwave water died like almost immediately, like within wow. days. And the other plant was fine. And ever since then, I'm like, I'm not using a microwave. I don't want to use one. I hardly ever do. If I have to like melt butter or something for a recipe and I don't have time, I'll put it in there, but very, very seldom. I won't even heat food up in there. It's like genetically modified products. It's, that's what it's doing. It's changing it. Well, with the I'm genetically, my, my new thing that I say to people who don't believe, they say, I don't believe in eating organic. Mm -hmm. It's like, first of all, it's not a belief. It's like a fact. There's there's a difference. And my response to people like that is, well, I have a question for you then. If I handed you a spray bottle of Roundup to go kill your weeds, would you spray it in your mouth and then swallow it? Would you do that? Because if they say no, well, that's what you're getting when you're eating GMOs. Right. You're, they, they're genetically modified to withstand being sprayed with right. weed killer. So tell me, are you going to just spray it in your mouth? No, who's going to do that? Nobody. So it's like, kind of think about that when you're eating food that's not organic, you're eating Roundup, you're eating glyphosate. It's not good for your health and you need to stop. Yeah, Parkinson's is related to that. The is damage it really? that it causes. Mm -hmm. Roundup, wow. any weed Roundup. killers. Yeah. Yeah, do you know that if you have weeds in your garden, you don't need Roundup, you can spray them with vinegar and it kills them. Right. It's just, there's a lot, you know, if you go online, you can find so many natural ways to substitute for the things that you're doing right now that are hurting you. It's, it's like simple. Drano, using Drano in your drains ruins them and it goes into the water supply. You can use enzymes and they work just as well. Interesting. Isn't it true? And you, you know, it, you don't have to be a genius to figure this stuff out. You just have to be a little curious get out there, get curious about your health, and then just start with little baby steps, little baby steps, get that exercise going and read those labels. And you'll be doing right. yourself a lot of good. It does take a long time though. When I took, when I took all those allergy foods out, oh my God, I'd spend hours at the grocery store reading every label. But certain stores, even though they may cost a little more, you can hit it a lot quicker than just trying to go to Giant Eagle, for example. Giant Eagle doesn't have a good selection of um, organic at all. And even Heinen's disappoints me sometimes. I feel like you can really do well at Trader Joe's. They're amazing. Yeah. Amazing. And, yeah. and their food is delicious. And if and you, Whole Foods. you don't like it, they'll take it back. It's unbelievable. Whole Foods as well. They're, they have more options with only a few things on the label instead of, you know, that much that you can't even understand what it is. Right, but Whole Foods, their price point is higher. You know, oh yeah, it is. People who have, are being trying to be budget con conscious, Trader Joe's has a good price point. It's gone up a little bit over the last few years, but it's it's still pretty good. For food products, but unfortunately they don't carry a lot of the cosmetic things that we were talking about before. It kind of have to go to someplace like Whole Foods for that. Yes, mm -hmm. Whole Foods and Trader Joe's, we're giving you a plug. Just saying. <laughs> well, we're, our time is up already. Um, goes by quick when we're talking about stuff like this. And we hope you'll come back again. We'd like to make it regular. Um, any last words about your biochemistry before we, the challenge of getting your biochemistry done? Right. Just honor the fact that you are biochemically unique. There's no one else like you. Try to figure out what your body does and doesn't like and honor that. And then as boring as it sounds, make sure you're eating healthy, get your exercise, learn what you need to know. If you Reduce want your stress, this is, this is my book, Wellness 101. It's on Amazon. But if you want that chapter, I'll be happy to send it to you about the lab test. Just look through it. It explains to you too, if you want to pull out your last set of labs from your last physical, mm -hmm. you can look at it and see where you fall in the ranges. I talk about all the ranges in there and what ranges are real and which ones are not mm -hmm. um, and what you want to know. Because I feel like so often with our health, we're told things, we just accept it. We don't go deeper. I think we need to be a little bit more adventuresome and dive a little bit deeper, 
learn a little bit more about yourself so you can address it. Kind of like that MTHFR, the mother effer gene yeah. that I have in 40% of us. That's a lot of people have that gene. Right. I know that I have to be more careful about inflammation. That's powerful information. That's empowering to know that. Some Absolutely. people say, oh, I don't want to know that. It's too scary. It's not. It's empowering. You want to know exactly what you need and then honor them. Absolutely. Well, thank you again. Thank you for Wonderful that. info to give out to the people watching today. And reach out to Gloria if you need more info. Thank you. Thanks for having me, ladies. It was great. Thank you. See you Have soon. Have a great day, everybody. Bye. -bye. Bye.